Sriracha, the elixir of the gods, the one true sauce, the bringer of sight to the blind, one sauce to rule them all, the Ayatollah of rock and roller. Fire in a hole, let's cook up some Asian short ribs. Please, stay tuned. You too, Angie and Dan. I'm going to be putting some sriracha in there. You'll see. So what I got here are some uh, beef short ribs. And we're going to uh, slather them with some Sang stir-fry oil. Get that on there. Get it all over them short ribs of beef. There you go. Nothing like Sang's. It's got a great garlic, cilantro, and uh, got some other spices in there. It's got some uh, onion, herbs, garlic, cilantro. It's got a great flavor. You want to get some Sang stir fry oil if you can. I highly recommend it. So we're going to slather that with some Sang's, and then we're going to take some five spice powder, Chinese five spice powder. We're going to sprinkle that on there, on those beef ribs. Sprinkle on some five spice powder. Get it all over them. Yep, that's going to be like our rub. And then we're going to uh, put these on the grill. And I got a piece of cherry wood right here that we're going to be smoking this up with, some cherry wood. I'm going to get this five spice powder all over these short ribs. Get quite a bit of that on there. It can be overpowering, but I think it, it'll get lost in the mix because we're going to braise these. And I think you'll see later that the, uh, the five spice is not going to matter that much. So what we're going to do now is put these on uh, indirect heat on the grill, which I have set up right here. And we're going to get them arranged on here indirect. I put some little bit more of that powder on there, a five spice powder. Some of these are real meaty and some of these are real uh, bony, but it's okay. It's no big deal. And we're not trying to cook these all the way through. We just want to get some smoke on them. So we're going to leave them on there for about 45 minutes. And we're going to put some cherry wood on the fire there to get some smoke going. I'm going to put a little bit more of that five spice powder on there, just a little. That's good stuff. And I, I got this recipe from the Williams Sonoma uh, website, and I'll put a link down in the bucket to the Williams Sonoma website. And uh, I adapted it for the grill. They don't make it on the grill, they cook theirs on a, in a pot. But anyway, we're going to be braising these, so stay tuned, we'll bring you right back. Well, so, as you can see, my uh, beef short ribs have already started to pull away from the bone. I'm going to get them off of there, get them in a bowl, and we'll put them back in. Look at that. Don't that look good? And uh, anyway, we're going to get them in this bowl here. We're going to get our sauce made up in our pot that we're going to braise these in. And like I said, some of these are real meaty and some of them are not, but it's going to be good. Got that five spice powder on them make some good flavor. And once again, I probably have too much meat for my pot, but it's okay. Okay, let me get my pot on the fire. In fact, I got two pots to get on the fire. Hope you can see that. That's my cast iron pot. Let's get a, get a shot where you can see down in that. And I've got another pot of water. And this pot has uh, some uh, water with some sugar it's been dissolved in it. That's going to be part of our uh, part of our braising liquid. That's uh, a half a cup or three, three fourths of a cup of water with a half a cup of uh, sugar dissolved in it. And I don't know what those things are. They got to get out of there. Whatever they are, we don't need them. Okay. So into our big pot, we're going to put 
some of the old Sang stir fry oil, which we always use for almost everything. Get the bottom of that thing covered with some Sangs. Sangs comes out of there slowly, it's very expensive. And then we've got an onion that we've sliced up into quarter inch slices. We're going to cook that up in there. Then we've got six cloves of garlic that we sliced up. We're going to stick that in there. And we're going to get our veggies cooked up a bit, get them translucent, and I'll bring you right back and show you the rest of this, uh, this wonderful sauce for this braising sauce. So please stay tuned. Okay, so my veggies have softened up quite a bit. The next thing we're going to put in there is some Japanese plum wine. And we need a third of a cup of plum wine to go in there. And this, this stuff is great. It tastes like uh, vermouth. For me, we're going to a third of a cup of Japanese plum wine. And that's going to bubble up. We'll probably have to move that up the heat. We're going to put a third of a cup of sesame oil. Just going to about show my bottle of sesame oil. And uh, that uh, sugar and water that we cooked up earlier is going to go in there. That's the sugar and water dissolved in. I think we're going to move this pot towards the center of the thing a little bit. I have to adjust my camera, of course. So you can see in the pot. There you go. Okay, what's next? We got the sesame oil. We got the uh, okay. We got some uh, third of a third of a cup of rice wine vinegar. Rice wine vinegar. It's all very Asian tasting flavors. And a third of a cup of soy sauce. And that's going to give it some of its color. The soy sauce. But. What's going to give it the most color and the most flavor and what everybody's waiting for, Angie and Dan, is of course the rooster sauce. A third of a cup of rooster sauce in there. And I don't even bother with the cap anymore. I just pour it right out the bottle. A third of a cup of rooster sauce. You want a little more, right Angie? A little more, right Dan? Okay, there you go. That's all you get enough crap in there already. Okay, one more thing we got to put in some uh, ginger and I have this uh, ginger uh, squeeze paste ginger which is pretty pretty handy. You can just squeeze it out like that and you got it in there. And then the other thing we need is uh, the zest of an orange. Then we got to put the, uh, the juice of an orange. So let me get my orange cut. Got too much crap over here my orange in half that I zested earlier. I'm going to get my strainer so that the uh, seeds don't go in the stuff here. Juice of an orange. Oranges ain't as juicy as they used to be at one time. That's pretty good, pretty much the juice of a whole orange. There's one half. Here's the other half. I really didn't see any seeds in that thing. i put that piece of orange in there too. It won't hurt it a bit. Okay, so we got the juice of an orange in there. We're going to stir that up a bit. Now, don't that look good? That's looking fine, baby. Ah, you should smell that. That plum wine is so good. It tastes so good. Okay, so we got our ginger, our uh, rice vinegar, plum wine. Where's my tongs at? I took my tongs. Here they are. Okay, we got that. I'll put the whole recipe down in the bucket so you can uh, follow along for yourself. I'm going to put our meat back in there, which is barely going to be enough room for all this meat in the pot to get submerged in that sauce, that Asian plum wine and uh, what you call it sauce in there. Oh man, look at that. How's that look? Does that look good? And those onions. I'm going to put that, you should smell that boy, that five spice powder. My goodness, that smells good. I think we either need less meat or more liquid. I might have to add some more water to that. Anyway, there you go. How's that look? Can you see that? 
I think you can. Yeah, you can see it. And we're going to cook this down for about an hour. I'm going to move it off the heat. I'm going to turn it around here and there. Try to get most of it as submerged as I can. It's not all going to fit, of course. But uh, I'm going to do the best I can to get it in the liquid so it can braise. And then that, that nice onion in there. I'm going to put the cover on that. Move it off the hot fire. Just let it simmer for about an hour. Move it over there. Cover the grill up. I'll spin it as we go along because you can see it's all getting hot on one side. So I'll probably have to just spin the pot around every now and then. I might want to add a little bit more liquid to that. I got a little bit of that beef stock that we made there. Put that in there. It won't hurt it a bit. It won't hurt to give it another shot of plum wine too. That stuff, good stuff. There you go. Okay, so we got the plum wine, rice vinegar, uh, sesame oil, ginger, juice of an orange. It's about as much orange juice as I could get in it. And the sriracha. Of course, you got to have sriracha and a little bit of soy. Put a little bit more soy. That's about it. So what we're going to do now is cover that. Let it cook for about an hour in there. Then we'll come back and I'll make some rice and we'll drink a beer. So please stay tuned. All right, at long last, it's time for a beer. And today's beer may not be the best beer I've ever had, but the bottle is worth the price of admission. It's, I don't know if you can see that. It's shaped like a Buddha. And this is Lucky Buddha imported from China, believe it or not. Lucky Buddha Brewing Company in China. And according to the Beer Advocate website, this is not very good beer. But the bottle is worth the price of admission because it's shaped like a Buddha. It's so cool. But anyway, let's give it a shot. How bad could it be? Let's pour it on out. It's nothing special. It's just a lager. Lucky Buddha. It's like the Budweiser of China. Is from what I understand from the websites. And that's pretty much what it looks like. It's like the Budweiser of China. And I don't expect too much from it, but look at that bottle. Is that the cutest bottle you ever saw? The Buddha, the Happy Buddha, Lucky Buddha. That's so cool. You could make a lamp out of that. Wouldn't that be cool? Let's take a sniff of that, see how that tastes. It's just a lager. That's all it is. Let's take a taste. It is very unremarkable beer. But, look at the bottle. I had a laugh when I saw those bottles, man. I had to buy a six pack to get this, these bottles. It's $10 a six pack, imported from China. Uh, enlightened beer. The Lucky Buddha, I love it. Now not to be confused with the uh, Funky Buddha, which is a real brewery in Florida. That's the Lucky Buddha. That's my beer for today. Okay, let's check out. Let's going to make some rice and get those ribs in a plate. See how they look. Stay tuned. So my Asian short ribs of beef are looking fabo, as uh, somebody I know would say. Old uh, Dan Webster. How's that look? Let's get some of that uh, sauce on there. The sauce is amazing with the onions and garlic in it. Oh man. Look at that stuff. Oh baby, how does that look? Can you see that? Let's take a picture of that. Make that our, uh, our money shot for today. Let me zoom in on that. Yeah, don't that look good? That's uh, that's fabo, man. We gotta take a taste of that. Look at that short ribs of beef, baby. Take a take a taste of that. That the pullback on that bone's incredible. The the ribs aren't as uh, tender as I would like them to be. They could cook a little bit longer, but they are cooked through. Now I'll tell you, that stuff's looking good, isn't it? Take a taste of that. Mmm. Oh man. What a great flavor. Tongue. 
excellent flavor on that. That's my video for today, babies. Lucky Buddha. The Budweiser of China. Anyway, if you like this crap, please subscribe. If you don't, go over and see my buddy Russ Helm. That smokes are rolling. He's a cool dude. He's been a big supporter of my channel and I really appreciate him as well as all the other guys who uh, watch and support my channel. But uh, anyway, go see Russ Helm over at Smokes Are Rolling. Come back next week. I guarantee it won't. <laughs> the beer won't be as bad as this one. It's not that bad. It's okay. It's just nothing special. You know what I mean? It's just beer. But my uh, Asian shirt ribs are excellent. Perfect. Thank you for watching. See you all next week. Bye.